As with all secret societies, you have levels, and, and if you're on the lower levels, you don't even know they're upper levels. You don't even, you don't even, they don't even tell you. You bump into it by accident, or someone comes along. Now, in Scottish Rite, that's something different, you know, because they know that there's a... But before then, and basically secret societies, such as, let's go to ancient Egypt. To the ancient Egyptians, the priests would tell the serfs, the guys that tilled the land, they would say, the sun is God, okay? And, and, and so the, they accepted that very um, low-level interpretation, all physical. That's not what the priests believed. What the priests believed, there was a second level. Um, the priests believed that, no, nope, the physical sun is not the supreme being. It's the spirit which flows through the physical sun that is the supreme deity. However, there was another level. And the priest didn't even know it. It's those that were involved and, 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 and like elevated to, to um, if I would have told you this 15 years ago, I might have gotten shot.
this goes back before even Lionel Chevlin, that Chris Carter was at a uh, cocktail party and he felt very out of place and apparently was in a tuxedo way in the corner. And the psychic came over to him and said, whatever you're working on is going to make you a ton of money. And that was just before he did the X-Files. Well, that psychic I talked to, I go, well, what were you doing at the Hollywood party? She goes, I was hired by the CIA to go to parties and then just go home and email what I talked about. So the CIA has been tracking Hollywood parties since the 80s in order to determine it because, you know, Hollywood films did, are a... Mm, the, they set the they, agenda. They, they set a foreign policy, sort of. I mean, they're no, it's a projection. It's America's dominance. They admit it's a lot of it's Hollywood. Right. And so they want to make sure that all the producers and the writers, that nobody's thinking anything so radical or doing a movie that will completely undermine their uh, foreign policy plans. Astrology, ancient mystical star science, or man-made mumbo-jumbo. Love it or loathe it, astrology has been around for thousands of years. Here's an Egyptian depiction of the night sky. The Egyptians believed that the constellations were the representation of their pantheonistic gods and goddesses. Astrologers focus on the area of the night sky known as the ecliptic, as seen here. The ecliptic is the apparent path of the sun as seen from the earth. Divided into the 12 major constellations that make up the ecliptic, astrologers follow the celestial bodies as they travel through it. From the ecliptic is derived the zodiac that we know today. The Egyptians believed that the heavens were imbued with the magical and mystical properties of their gods and goddesses, and they believed that they could channel their energies by reflecting the constellations in their architecture on the ground below. An example is the layout of the pyramids at Giza, which the Egyptians built to reflect the celestial grouping known as Orion's Belt. It's an ancient hermetic principle called as above, so below. Astrology today has been largely relegated to the ranks of superstition, with many people glancing at their horoscopes for fun. But tabloid astrology merely focuses on the position of the sun through the ecliptic. In-depth astrology considers the influence of all the solar system's celestial bodies, following the positions of the Sun, Saturn, and even Pluto. As the celestial bodies travel through the ecliptic, the apparent path they trace as seen from the Earth, astrologers believe they form influential aspects to each other. This in-depth astrology is used in occult circles, such as secret societies, like the Order of the Golden Dawn, with its complex occult symbolism. The Freemasons, whose members have included America's first president, George Washington, use astrology in their symbolic art. Here we see a Freemasonic tracing board whose royal arch can be seen adorned with the signs of the zodiac. On the Freemasonic apron, the all-seeing eye of Horus, an Egyptian symbol, at the George Washington Masonic Monument, we see a giant compass and square depicted, 
the Freemasonic symbol of their great work, is seen here also adorned with another Egyptian all-seeing eye. But what of the compass and square and its Illuminati symbolism? What can it mean? In the Divine Pymander is revealed the Hermetic Maxim, as above, so below, as pictured by this tarot card of a magician with one hand up and the other hand down. As above, so below. And what that means is, is that in esoteric thought, in everything that is above is reflected down below. And that everything that is down here has a supernal macrocosmic, if you will, uh, origin. And that's one of the, the essential concepts in the occult. As above, so below is repeatedly symbolized in esoteric art and a variety of symbols. The most basic of which is a triangle pointing upward or above. This is accompanied by a second triangle pointing downward, below. When combined, they form a hexagram, commonly recognized as the Star of David, one of the most dominant symbols in the occult. Removing the base of the triangles, one can see the outline for the square and compass of Freemasonry. This next image shows what Manley Hall called the God of Reflections. He is called the Ancient One, perched over a pool of water that reflects his image. Notice also how the placement of his arms and the crown upon his head form two triangles like a Star of David. While on his chest is a Maltese cross positioned upward and then reflected again down below. Esoterics believe this same principle of reflection can be found in nature, with bodies of water providing a mirror as a picture of the Hermetic Maxim. With this in mind, consider the placement of the reflecting pools in our nation's capital. Before the Washington Monument, the U.S. Capitol, the Lincoln Memorial, and the Supreme Court. From the symbolic compass and square, with its Egyptian all-seeing eye, and as above, so below references, and the royal arch adorned with astrological symbolism, can we conclude that the Illuminati and their so-called great work is to mimic their ancient Egyptian masters? As above, so below. All those individuals that were involved in any type of architecture to the ancients, that philosophy, that di dictum, especially in Freemasonry, was as above, so below. What you have in the heavens should reflect at a certain period of time that which is on the earth. Federal Triangle was basically reflected from the stars. Washington DC was built according to hermetic principles as above so below. It was laid out to reflect what was going on in the stars where you had a right angle triangle surrounding the constellation of Virgo. The right angle triangle surrounding Virgo is partly reflected in the layout of Federal Triangle. The White House, Washington Monument, and Capitol Building were designed in a right triangle, according to a star pattern above, where three stars surround the constellation Virgo, forming a stellar triangle. With this in mind, consider the following. On September the 11th, 2001, during the incident involving the Twin Towers, there was, above, an important astrological alignment between two of the most astrologically powerful celestial bodies, Saturn and Pluto. They formed an important aspect to each other, a highly destructive one, an opposition.